My name is Shalene Bazarian, and I'm from Reading, Massachusetts. It's a little bit north of Boston. I'm 57 years old. And my story sort of just even took me by surprise. What had happened was I think that my story resonates with people because I am like the typical woman. I think that I gained weight a little bit at a time as I got older. I had started, you know, in college. I think I, you know, jokingly, they call it the freshman 15. And, you know, you're eating different kinds of food and you're you're having late nights and you're out. And so I, probably, I was an average weight growing up. I probably put about 15 pounds on in college. And then I decided to go to law school. And then again, that was even more studying and more working and, and probably another 20 or 30 pounds crept on. You know, and then eventually um, I got married and um, then, you know, you're going out, you're celebrating, you're doing a lot of different things and a few more pounds crept on. And, you know, all along the way, I think I had tried almost every diet under the sun um, to lose weight. And what invariably happened was I would do well for a little bit um, and then it would creep back on again or I would, you know, try something else and think this was the thing that was going to help. And so finally what had happened was um, I was pregnant with my first son and, um, you know, after I had him, I was treating myself to a day of beauty at um, at a day spa in Boston. And it was really right before his christening. And I was going to do, you know, the whole the whole nine yards. Um, and so when I got to the desk, um, the woman, you know, checked me in and gave me um, the robe and the slippers. And I, I went to go get changed. And um, unbelievably, you know, the one size fits all robe didn't fit me. You know, and at this time, I tell people I was probably around 208 pounds, 210 pounds. And um, I knew that I had needed to lose weight. I don't think I ever realized I needed to lose half myself. Um, you know, it's like a, I, I said, I, I think I, like most people, had a little bit of uh, body dysmorphia. I think I, you know, knew I needed to lose some weight. I don't think I ever realized how bad it was, you know, kind of until that moment when the, when the rope didn't fit. But what made, you know, matters go from bad to worse was when I went back to the desk, um, the receptionist was really mean to me. Um, you know, and like in my mind's eye, she was really tiny and really mean. And she just kept making me repeat over and over again that the robe didn't fit. And it was just this awful moment suspended in time for me that um, she just kept saying, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? And there were people behind me. And it was just this like mortifying moment. And so I went back to the dressing room when she finally mustered up a larger robe for me. Um, but my day was ruined. But in the dressing room, I just remember having this moment that I am just never going to feel like this again. And I said, and this time I mean it. And so what I had done at that, you know, the, the, the spa day kind of came and went. It was, it, was, it was a very bad experience for me. I, I was fighting back tears through the whole day. But um, that really was the um, turning point for me in my life. And up until that point, I think I tried everything from Atkins to Weight Watchers, I call it. I tried everything. And I think that I would have some success. And then you'd get a little bit of comfortable and then you'd backslide again. And, and what I did was I started to learn anything and everything I could about, you know, fitness and losing weight. And but what was different for me this time was I think, you know, as far as the fitness component goes, I think any time I had tried to lose weight, like a lot of women, I think I, I was walking or I was doing a lot of cardio um, exercises. And I think for the first time, like I started to um, look into bodybuilding and weightlifting and I mean, not really body, more, more weight training and resistance training. Um, and, and I found that that was like, you know, something that was really life changing for me because you know, the thing about um, when you build more muscle mass, you know, you can burn more calories at rest, you know, you can act, you can eat more. And that was a big incentive because, you know, your body burns um, your calories differently. So that was like sort of the fitness component. But what I what I had started to try to do was um, I remember hearing um, a motiva motivational speaker once and they said um, it was Tony Robbins said, I think if you want to be successful at something, you know, try to mimic people who are successful at what you want to be successful at. And so like, that's when I started to really pay attention to like, you know, I, I did everything I thought a fit person could do. I bought fitness magazines, I bought protein shakes, I, you know, I made oatmeal and got protein bars. And, and I started to do all of the things that I thought um, a fit person would do. And, and the more I learned, the more I added to that and some things like that, I realized, okay, well, that doesn't work for me, but this does. And I really tried to pay attention to, you know, what, um, what was working until I, as I was figuring it all out, I joined a gym, I got home workout DVDs. And, and so I, I really started to pay attention to what was working. And it was really difficult because I always um, say, 
you don't really know how other people in your life are going to respond when you start to make these kinds of changes. I mean, I, you think that people are going to be supportive. And I always say the first five or 10 pounds, people are like, oh, good for you. You can tell you're losing weight. But when you start to say no a little bit more often, when it's like, no, I don't want to eat that. No, I'm not going to have the cupcake at the birthday party. No, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not going to have, you know, the pizza or whatever it is like that, you know, that was a change. And that showed people like, you know, that I, you were, you were making different choices. And so I, you know, really tried to not make food my entertainment. I tried to realize at that point in my life, the older I was getting, the more um, I was becoming a spectator in my own life. I had gone, you know, to watch a movie or watch a play or watch a sporting event. But, you know, little by little, as I looked back, the things I used to actually do kind of disappeared. I didn't go for, you know, bike, bike rides anymore. I didn't go for a walk. I used to play racquetball every Saturday morning with a girlfriend on Saturday mornings. And, and, you know, I'd stopped doing that. Used to go dancing, used to actually, you know, do some things until like I realized that most of my social activity revolved around either meeting friends for drinks and appetizers or going out to eat. And, and, I, and I really tried to focus on that I wanted to, you know, be an active participant in my own life. And so, you know, what had happened was eventually after having, you know, some success with, you know, working out on my own, I got a personal trainer. I actually eventually took a personal training certification myself because I just really wanted to learn everything I could. And I remember working, you know, working out with her and I, I gradually lost weight. What I started to do was I gave myself little mini goals. I said, um, I'm not going to try to think in terms of I need to lose 100 pounds because that just seemed overwhelming. I said, I'm going to try for five or 10 pounds goals. And what I would do is when I would hit a new um, size, I would tell myself that I'm only buying a few. Um, I, I would buy a pair of jeans, a pair of black pants and a pair of tan pants because I didn't want to um, get comfortable because I think that's what is a big thing that happens is I think people start to think, I know what I'm doing. I don't need to like write it down. I don't need to, you know, put it on my list of things to do. And um you know, it, it, you start to backslide a little bit. And even after all these years of keeping it off and kind of how it has changed my life, I really like, I still put it on my list of things to do. I still make sure I do something every day. I actually do my morning workout. I call it my insurance workout. I like to get it in before the world tries to steal my day. And that way, if, you know, unexpected things happen, I will have at least gotten something in. And plus I call it my coffee before my coffee. I genuinely feel better. Um, when I actually, you know, start my day, you know, with a little bit more energy. So that's been a really big, you know, routine and lifestyle changes that I could live with. And I said, like, that is one of the bigger things is that you need to decide, you know, what you can live with. And for me, like I joke that as good as I've gotten about so many different things with my food, if I completely took the cream and sugar out of my coffee, I would be a miserable person to be around. So I realized for me, that was not negotiable. I went much less in my cream and just a smidge of organic cane sugar, but that was something that kept me sane and that kept me on track that would prevent me from just saying, that's it, I give up, I can't, you know, I can't do this anymore. Um, I made changes that were actually things I could live with and, you know, what, what I got rid of now, I, you know, I, I don't really miss. Um, but so what had happened was after um, I had lost the, all of the weight, um, my trainer really encouraged me to send my before and after pictures into one of those, you know, like a catalog or a magazine or something. And and I had got I had got picked. And um and so at first it was in a workout catalog and um, for workout videos. And they they had my before and after picture. And I think I got like one hundred dollars in free workout videos or something. But what had happened was someone at Good Housekeeping had seen it and um, they had contacted the the catalog and asked to get in touch with me. And so um, they asked if I wanted to be in the magazine as a, as a weight loss success story. And um, and I was like, oh, my goodness, like who wouldn't want, you know, who, you got to go to New York for the day and uh, and they did your hair and makeup. And uh, and it was a, a really fun experience. And what was really interesting was I met other women and there were, I think, five of us and we had all done something different. And I'm what you know, what worked for each of us. But the concept was supposed to originally be that you didn't need to spend a lot of money to lose weight, which is something I really um, firmly believe. I think that there's so many things that are marketed for like these magic pills and magic bullets or do this or drink that. And I think it really is as simple as, you know, like breaking it down to, you know, what you're really eating and, and what and what your fitness routine looks like. But so once my story was in good housekeeping, that I think, in addition to my spa moment, which we now I affectionately call my aha moment, um, 
that really sort of like, I could not believe the response to the article. I heard from people literally around the world. Um, I got messages on social media and I got messages from some high school girlfriends who had said, we didn't know, you know, that you had put on weight and, you know, I'm trying to lose weight and can you give me some tips and advice? And, and so jokingly, you know, like uh, we would joke around about it. I would be, I'd be giving advice on Facebook and, um, it became like kind of like it was taking over my like my personal social media page. So I, I made a social media page called FBJ Fit because it was a little nickname my high school girlfriends gave. And I thought I would talk about diet and advice and fitness tips there. And, you know, when I first started, it was a few of my high school girlfriends and a few other people who had reached out to me. And now it's close to almost 10,000 followers and um, which I just can't believe. But um, the more and more people I heard from, I like I answer everyone because I share my story as freely as I do. And um, I just hope to reach someone else that's struggling, someone else that was feeling like I felt that I tried everything and that nothing worked. I'm too old. It's in my genetics. It's, you know, it's not possible. And I, I think that, you know, I mean, I, I try to tell my stories um, when I give little jokes. It's like I always say, like, you know, busier than a fit person or the BLTs count. So like, and I always say that's bites, licks, tastes, and sips, like so that you're paying attention to what it is you're eating. Or I have other little phrases that I say, like, it's not about, you know, never having a cupcake. It's about not always having a cupcake. This seems to be a big, um, you know, mindset of that you don't want to deprive yourself. And I hear that deprivation word all the time. And I try to tell people, like, why is it you only think about that in terms of food? Why don't you feel deprived that you can't buy the outfit that, you know, you think you would look good in? Or why why don't you feel deprived that you have trouble walking up a flight of stairs or that you want to be like, you know, when you're older, you want to move around? Like, why does it only have to be in terms of deprived, you know, thinking that you're depriving yourself by not eating everything that, you know, you have the opportunity to? For me, I started to realize that, um, you know, for, for my, you know, lifestyle and my work, I was at a lot of occasions. And I used to, you know, say like, oh, well, it's special party food. Why not? And, I, and then I realized that, you know, it's OK to have fun celebratory foods when it's a once in a while celebration. But if it's part of your lifestyle that you are constantly surrounded by, you know, like a lot of decadent choices, then that's, you know, not a once in a while thing. It's not a treat. It's an everyday thing. And so that's where my joke about you know, you don't always have to have the cupcake. And I said, and now that I'm in my weight range, I think I really pay attention to, I give myself three pounds um, that I keep, try to keep within so that that way I have some wiggle room to have the treats when I want them. And then if I creep out of range, which I mean, during COVID, you know, who didn't? Um, I think that that was, you know, we were all stuck in a lot more than we were used to. And there was, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of cooking and baking going on. So I, I think, you know, I try to pay attention to the, to that. And um, when I'm outside my range, that's when I try to, you know, really focus in again on, you know, going back to what really worked for me, which was, you know, as simple as it sounds, I guess it's, it's it was leafy greens, healthy lean proteins, complex carbs, um, and healthy fats. So like, what do I mean by that? Like I had like, you know, skinless, breasts of chicken. I had lots of broccoli and asparagus and tons of salad. God knows lots of salad. Um, but instead of like, you know, I think for women, carbohydrates are such a big thing. So I said, I, I really got rid of the rice and pasta. I, occasionally I have brown rice, but I switched to like having a sweet potato or I have a lot of, you know, like oatmeal or, but a brown rice when I want, when, you know, when I want that. But I really found for me that the carbs are, are a difficult thing because I know some diet programs say you can have a half a cup of pasta or a piece of pizza. But for me, I, I, those are a little bit of trigger foods. I'm not full by one piece of pizza, so I will have more than that. And I know that about myself. So I would rather have like, you know, a, a good sized piece of chicken with, you know, a sweet potato and a salad and a vegetable and have a meal that satisfies me. So that's where I try to find myself where I'm, when I'm faced with decisions as to what I can live with and, and, and what I find I respond to. Marlene, your story is absolutely inspiring. You know, they say that um, a picture tells a thousand words. And with your permission, uh -huh. I would love to share your before and after picture with our audience. Absolutely. So when I saw this image, I was just absolutely blown away. What you've accomplished is incredible. 
How long did it take you to go from that size to this size? I mean, it was a it was approximately a year. I did have a baby in between um, because I had lost about half of it, and then decided I wanted to have another child. So that was kind of a that was a, a tricky decision because that was what kind of had gotten me to my highest point in the first place. But I was racing the clock, so to speak. So, but if you start to finish, it was about a year. And um, and um it, yeah. And, and when I converted pounds to kilograms, so some of our listeners are on the metric system, that was 45 kilos, Wow, 100 pounds in a year. Yeah, I, now, I shot. Sorry. Say that. Uh, I, I said I just shot two, two pounds a week was about what I was average. I was trying to stick to. So some weeks were better, some weeks were, you know, the less. Two pounds a week. And, and it sounds so doable. You know, the way you said that you set yourself little goals. Right. You didn't aim to lose 100 pounds. You were setting small goals that were achievable, correct? Yes, because 100 pounds just sounded, you know, uh, so discouraging. It, yeah. it just, it, it seemed overwhelming. And I, I just tried to say, you know, we're just getting through this little bracket. And and then I would, you know, like I said, I tried not to um, get comfortable. So I wouldn't get like my favorite clothes or the best, you know, I would just get a simple pair of pants that fit for as long as they did until I got to the next size. And then I, and I promised myself a new wardrobe when I was done. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, you have a few little quotes, sayings that you use to inspire people. I don't know if you can remember some of your top tips. I'd love you to share a few of those. I'm sure. Well, my first thing I always say is, you're no busier than a fit person. They're all busy, too, because I think that people love to tell you how busy they are. Um, we're all busy. I have three children. I take care of my elderly mother. I, I, I work full time and, and then still do my blog and my um, fitness writing. So yeah, we're all busy. <laughs> um, some of my other tips would be um, the, uh, the bite flicks and tastes and sips. So BLTs count. Pay attention to the extra food that you're not thinking of. Like sometimes you're not mindful when you take your child's pizza crust or you lick a knife after you make a sandwich. And, and th those things you need to be, pay especially when you're trying to lose 100 pounds, you need to be paying attention to what's going to you know put you over the edge. Absolutely inspiring. Very, very inspiring. Now, were you always small in your formative years? And then the weight just slowly came on as you grew older? Yeah, I, I don't think, you know, I, I really think my story resonates with people because I don't think I ever felt like, oh, I look amazing when I was younger. I mean, looking back, I was like, no, you were fine. But I felt like, you know, like you always felt like you needed to lose that last five or 10 pounds. But looking back now, I'm like, no, I, I was an, I was I was never like I would never describe myself as athletic. I mean, I was active. I danced. I, you know, I, like I said, I would play racquetball with a friend, but I was not like, you know, like the girls today, it's good for them is that they're all very into like, you know, athletics. And I think that that's a great thing. That was not really as much the case when I was younger. Yeah, it's incredible. Now, there was something you shared with me, um, a message that you got from somebody who had either read an article or, um, reached out to you. Okay, I'd love to just read this. Yeah. It said, thank you to the ends of the earth for sharing your story. I literally have this conversation about what I'm eating and listening to my family and friends comments. I'm from Louisiana. So you can imagine. And why am I still on this journey after six years? Even from a genetic and age demographic standpoint, I know what the other side looks like and I can easily be right back in that place. My starting weight was 230. Wow. And my ending was 160 pounds. So you are helping other people just by sharing your story. That's really the... Uh... So that I go right back to her and said, you made my day. So you're welcome. But thank you, because that's really what gives me the um, I, I always like to think of that one woman that was so mean to me at the spa. And I think I took that one mean moment and didn't just change my life. I, I tried to really like help other people with it. And 
And it's funny because a lot of people who see my story, because it has been in a lot of magazines, um, yes. they, you know, so they'll, they'll say, how do you like, you know, do well, how do you feel about your before picture being on the, you know, it's been on covers. <laughs> so I'm like, well, <laughs> I, I'm not embarrassed. I walked around society. People saw what I looked like. And I said, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I, I share it willingly because I really want anyone else that wants, you know, wants some help or wants to know they're not alone, that it's possible. So if you could go back to that younger woman, let's say there's somebody who's listening to us right now, right. doesn't even know where to start, and you could give her three steps on getting started, what would those three steps be? I would say shop the outside of the supermarket. That's like my top tip. It's like anything, the more processed it is, the more junk is in it, the more sodium is in it, the more um, you know, chemicals that you don't need. So try to like really, I, I call it like um, almost like math, like reduce it to its common denominator. So like instead of orange juice, think of an orange. Um, even even instead of peanut butter, think peanuts. Like, you know, like if you can simplify something to being less processed, that's really a good place to start. I think one of my other tips is if it's white, don't eat it unless it's cauliflower. <laughs> like um, white, white pasta, white bread, you know, white rice, those things really don't have the same nutritional value for you that, you know, other, other foods would. And, and so that would be, you know, an, another tip. I cannot stress enough how much life-changing, you know, weight training was for me. I don't think that's, I think most women, even if they do lift weights, I call them the weenie weights. They go for those little pink vinyl weights that are at the gym. Um, you're capable of much more than that. And it should 12 repetitions of anything should be a challenge for you. Um, and you'll be surprised, like heavier weights do wonderful things for you. That would be a, a really big one. Fantastic. Now, if I could take you into your future, if time was an illusion, and we could teleport you to have a conversation with a hundred year old you. You're Ooh. now a grandmother, you're surrounded by your dogs, your cats, your grandchildren <laughs> and great grandchildren. And you could have a conversation with that wise woman who's led you there from this point. Based on how you're living your life and how many lives you're going to touch, what would you say to that woman? You know, this is such an interesting question because I always do the reverse. I always say, if I could go back in time, what would I tell my younger self? So this is really an interesting question for me. Um, I think I would tell her to make sure that even though she's older, that you can still, you know, take care of yourself. Um, my, my goal is to be as mobile as possible for as long as possible. And, you know, I saw a kid from my dad as he battled, um, you know, terminal lung cancer, but he was an overweight big guy and it, it was hard to see someone who had been in the military and so strong and so active, you know, kind of not be able to move as well. And so I think that, you know, just don't be sedentary, just, you know, keep, keep moving. I absolutely yeah. love that. It is about keeping moving. So how can people get hold of you? Is it through your website? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm on my website and my blog is at fbjfit. Dot com and I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter at FBJ Fit. And you're helping other people now to go on this journey? Yeah, I hear from people, I, you know, like I said, every time my story, it has been on the landing page of MSN. It's been in Reader's Digest, um, First for Women magazine. It was on Woman magazine in the UK. It's like it's been... Uh, one time it was on something, an extra in the Czech Republic. I hear from people all over. And it is like incredible to me because the fact that somebody around the world, like, you know, is like your story touched me and made me start my own journey is, I, I don't know, that is so gratifying to me. And I answer everybody and I'm not selling anything. I just, you know, I will give them, I, I wrote out all of my notes of what I did for myself. I will share that with anyone that asks. I have favorite recipes I give. You know, on, on my page, I try to do like um, product reviews. I try to do um, what I'm trying that I liked, what I didn't like, some recipes. Like I always try to make um, fun mocktails or, um, you know, so like if you want to try to do something and, and have less calories with it, I'll try to come up with different things for them to try. And it, it's like that's it really brings me joy. I That's what that I'm an attorney by trade. I never got any real satisfaction from doing it. And people only need attorneys when they're miserable. <laughs> <laughs> so it is so much nicer for me to hear that something I did like really helped someone and uh and that I, I can't ask for more than that that's like something that I'm very proud of oh that is awesome it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today your story is truly truly inspiring well thank you 
Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in today. The Her Story movement is really attracting some phenomenal women who are vulnerable, who will bear their souls so they can share a story that can become the light at the end of the tunnel for somebody else. And I think this is really one of those beautiful examples. So thank you so much, Charlene. Oh, thank you for having me. This was so nice. I'll be back again tomorrow, everybody, with yet another amazing guest. Have a fantastic day, morning or evening, wherever you are in the world. And bye for now. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you.